It just got a lot easier to work with the great text with GPT model in AI Builder, thanks to new custom prompts. This new functionality gives us a place to store and curate custom prompts to use inside of AI Builder easily. And it's natively built right into the Power Platform. So let's take a look at how they work, how to build one, and how to use them in Power Apps and Power Automate. To get to the new AI Prompts page, you'll go to make.powerapps.com and go over to your left-hand navigation menu. Click on the More tab and you'll look for AI Hub. And if you haven't already, make sure to click that pin to pin this to your navigation. In the AI Hub, you'll see this section now for AI Prompts. And this will take you to the AI Prompts landing page. This will be your one-stop shop to not only see the pre-built prompts that are there for the Create Text with GPT Action and AI Builder, to do things like classifying text, doing sentiment analysis, extracting information and responding to complaints, but also your place to go to create new custom prompts. And you'll see all the prompts for your organization that you have access to, as well as the ability to filter by the ones shared with you and the prompts that you've created. The most powerful piece of this whole thing is the ability to curate and create your own custom prompts. So to do that, you'll click the Create Text Using Custom Prompts button. One option here is you could start from a template. So if you know you want to have a prompt to extract information from text, you can click on that pre-built template and just customize it to your needs. But I'm gonna focus on creating one totally from scratch. So to do that, we'll click the Custom Task with Custom Prompts option and choose the Create a Custom Prompt button. Now we can start building our prompt here in this blank text input. For me, I wanna have a prompt that allows me to evaluate resumes. I wanna pass in a resume and the job requirements and have the generative AI model give me a recommendation for if this person is a good hire. So I'm gonna start typing my prompt here. So I'll say act as an HR recruiter, evaluate this resume, and here is where I wanna paste in some dynamic content. And you'll actually notice we have this yellow message that pops up, letting us know that we do have to have at least one dynamic value before we can even save this prompt. To add a dynamic value, we're gonna choose this add a dynamic value button, and it gives us this little input box where we can give this dynamic value a name. This is really just like declaring a variable. So I'm going to call this resume text and press enter to confirm that. And when we press enter, you can see it applied that. So there's our variable basically. And we can always change the name of this at any time if we want to by clicking on the pencil button. So now I can put in dynamic content from my Power App or Flow and pass that into this prompt. So I want to evaluate this resume and I'll say, and compare it against the job requirements. And we need another dynamic input here. So I'll choose dynamic value. For this one, we'll just call it job requirements, enter. And then I just have some additional information that I've already typed out here, some instructions for the model. I want to basically get a higher, no higher recommendation based off how good of a fit the person is and give an executive summary, bullet point summary really of the main qualifications, strengths, weaknesses, and all of that. So these are just instructions that I'm passing to the model. Now at this point, it's pretty much ready. But before I save it, I want to make sure to rename it because you see it gives us this very unhelpful name for the prompt, just custom prompt with the date and time. So I'm going to highlight that and we'll call this resume review. Okay, so I'm going to save this now that I have a meaningful name. And at this point, once it's saved, it's ready to use inside of an app or flow. But before we do try to venture into using it, I think it's a good idea to use the built-in test functionality. So you see we have this test your prompt option. And if we expand that out, it has our dynamic values that we defined and we can paste content into those. So I actually have some sample resume text that I had generative AI create for me. I'm gonna paste all of this long text in here in this box. And then I'm going to paste my job requirements for a Power Platform Advocate job into this box here. And now we'll just click the test prompt button and see what output we get. And it looks pretty good. It's kind of comparing what the main requirements are here and giving us a pretty good summary. I could tweak the prompt at this point if it wasn't giving me exactly what I wanted. So maybe it's a little too long. So I could say give a three paragraph summary of the candidate's qualifications. Three paragraphs is kind of long, so I'll say a one paragraph. I'll say include a hire or no hire decision at the top based on how closely they match the requirements. Okay, so I tweaked it a little bit and we'll see if this gives us a better result. So I made that change. So now let's go back and we'll do another test. 
All right, so a little bit better. We'll run with it though for the sake of seeing how to use these prompts here. So now we'll close out of this and we'll see as soon as we do that, now in the My Prompts tab here, we have the resume review prompt. So this is my spot to go to see all the prompts that I've created. And right now I'm the only one that has access to this. If I wanna share this, I can go to the Share tab and just like I would share an application or workflow, I could type anyone's name in my organization and I could share this particular prompt with them so that they can use it as well. Now let's look at using this in a flow first. So we'll go over to Power Automate. And for the sake of keeping things simple, I'm going to use this in a instant flow, but you can use this in any business process that you have. So if you wanna have this automatically run when a new email is received and extract the attachment or the resume and all of that, you can totally do that. I'm just gonna keep it simple. So we'll go over to our create button here in Power Automate. We'll do an instant cloud flow and choose the manually trigger a flow option and choose create. Now we have our nice new flow designer and we can click on the plus button and add an action. And let's see how we go and get that prompt that we just created. So to do that in our search, the easiest way is to search for create text. And it should first thing pop up the AI builder connector. And in that connector, you'll see we have two different actions. So we have create text with GPT, which is the classic quote unquote action to be able to paste in your own prompt and call it directly there. But the one we want for this new custom prompts functionality is the create text with GPT using a prompt. Because if we select that one, it'll give us a drop down box that will show us all of the custom prompts that we've defined that we have access to. So in here, I can see there is my resume review prompt. And now if I select that, another panel will pop open with the inputs that we have defined. So we have our job requirements and we have our resume text. And that's really all we have to do to call our new custom prompt. Now I wanna make this dynamic. So I'm gonna go back to my manually trigger a flow trigger and I'm gonna add in some input so that when I run this, I can dynamically paste in the requirements and the resume. So I'm gonna add a text input I'll just call this resume input and then another text input that we'll call requirements input. So now going back to our create text with GPT using a prompt action, now inside of these individual inputs, I can choose the lightning bolt icon, which gives us our dynamic content and map the requirements to our requirements input and the resume text to our resume input. Now at this point, I'm gonna give this a name, so we'll call this resume review, and I can click save. Now when I click save though, I did this on purpose, you'll see this red box that pops up. It's letting us know that for responsible AI purposes, we do want to run any AI generated text with this action through an approval process so that a human can review it and make sure that there's nothing malicious or wrong with the outputted text. So before we save this and test it out and use it, we'll go and do that right now. So we'll go to our plus button, we'll add an action, and we'll search for approval. We'll add a start and wait for an approval action. We'll choose the approval type, so we'll do just first to respond, and then we'll just fill out the details here. So I can say review AI generated text, I'll assign that to myself in this case. And then in the details, we'll use our dynamic content again. And in the create text with GPT action here, we'll get the generated text so that we can review that. And just to finish this out, let's add one more action and we'll add a condition just to check was this approved or not. And then we'll use our dynamic content again. So we'll say if the outcome of that approval is equal to approve. And then if so, at this point, that's when we probably want to proceed with our process, whether it's sending an email or the recommendation or whatever it might be. In my case, I'll just do an add an action and we'll just do a compose, which lets us see in the workflow what the output was. So in the compose, I'll do dynamic content again and we'll point that to our AI generated text here. So here's our text and that will close out this process so that we can test it. Okay, now let's do a save. Everything's green, that's good. That means we can actually test this thing. So we'll click the test button. We'll do the manual option. And now we have our inputs where we paste in our resume and our requirements. So here is our resume text. And here are our requirements. And we'll just choose run flow. 
So it's triggered. Looks like it's already got the text there, so it should be on the approval step. So I'll open up Power Automate again, and we'll go over to our approvals tab to see if we have that approval there. And it looks like we do, there it is. And there is our AI generated text. So I can review all of that. Looks like it is recommending that person for the job. If it looks good to me, I can say approve. And that should finish out our process here. And it looks like the flow ran successfully. I can see the inputs and the outputs natively in the flow run history as well of what happened and we're good to go. So that's how easy it is to use this inside of Power Automate with the custom prompts. Now let's segue to Power Apps and see how we can do the same thing inside of Power Apps. So I'm gonna go to my Create button. We'll do a blank application. We'll just do a Canvas app here. I'll call this one Resume Review. Click Create. Now this isn't required by any means, but I like using the new modern controls for Power Apps because they look really nice. So I'm gonna enable that feature by going to Settings, Upcoming Features, and searching for modern, and we'll toggle this option on. And now when I go to insert, we'll see this modern tab here. So I'll add in a new modern text input, and I'll add in, let's see, a modern label for text there. And finally, we'll add in a modern button. So these are the basics of what we need. So I'm just gonna rearrange these. So we're gonna need one label for resume, where we can put in the resume. This will be the resume text that we'll paste in. And I'm going to copy both of these twice. So we'll have resume, we'll have requirements, and then we'll have the output of what the recommendation was. So I'm just gonna rename these. This one is requirement, and this one is recommendation. And to make things easier when I have to get to building formulas, I'm going to go ahead and rename these controls right away. So this input here, I'm gonna rename to text resume. This one here, I'll rename to text requirements. And this one here, let's make text recommendation. All right, so we have all the basics in the app to make it function that we need. Uh, the button real quick, I'll rename this to get recommendation. All right, so now the piece is how do we get that custom prompt inside of Power Apps? So to do that, we'll go over to our data sources tab because at the end of the day, this is a data source that we've created. So if we go to the add data option, what you'll do is actually search for the name of the prompt that you created because it basically creates that prompt as a data source for you to use inside of your Power App. So we called ours resume review prompt. And you see, as soon as I type resume in that search box there, it shows that resume review prompt option with the AI Builder logo. So we know that is a custom prompt there. So we just select that and that adds that as a data source that we can use inside of our Power App. And once we have that in, we can go to our button, and this is where we'll actually call and execute that prompt. So in this button, we'll go to the on select, and to call this data source, we call it like any other data source that we have to call our prompt. So we'll put in the name here of resume review prompt, and you'll see we have a dot predict. This is how we actually call that prompt itself. And when we do that, we have our IntelliSense letting us know the inputs that we need for this particular function. So this is the inputs that we defined when we initially created that prompt. So first it's expecting the job requirements, separated by a comma, and then the resume text. So we can bind these to these text boxes that we just put in to make that call. So I can say text requirements dot value for the first one, and then it wants the resume text. So we'll say text resume dot value for that one, and we'll just close that out. So that will actually go and make that call. Now, the thing we need here though, is I need to be able to take that information and put that into this recommendation text box. One way to do that is by storing this data in a variable. So I can wrap this whole function inside an update context. I can give this variable a name of var recommendation. Now, after this predict, if I do a dot, you see that we actually have two outputs of this call. It gives us a finish reason. So this is really good for debugging, like if it didn't execute correctly. But the one that we actually want to store in this variable is the text. That's the actual outputted text 
of this. So now I can close that out. And now that's towards somewhere that I can access. The final piece here is to go into my recommendation text input and its value property and bind it to that variable we just set. Well, those are all the pieces we need. So now we can test this out. So we'll run this application. We're gonna paste in our job requirements here. Now, when we do that, you see that we can't really see all of the requirements. This is just a simple setting we need to toggle for these inputs. So if we click on this one, there's a mode setting, which is set to single line by default. But if we change it to multi-line, then we can see all the text. So let's go through and do that for each one of these really quick so we can see all the text that we have. And we'll go back to running our app and I'll paste in my resume text. There we go. And now we should be able to just click that get recommendation button and it should fill out that data in this recommendation field field based off of what the generative model thinks. All right, there we go. So there's our review of the resume and looks good, it worked. So that's how simple it is to call these custom prompts for AI Builder inside of your Power Apps. Hopefully this is a good overview of what you can do with this new functionality. It's really making it easier to integrate and use the Create Text with GPT model in AI Builder. Now, of course, there's all kinds of things you can do. If you want to do more than using AI Builder and you want to use some of the co-pilots and save your prompts for that in an easy to store central place, you can still do things like using the prompt management application that I built in Power Apps and it's available on our Power Platform samples repository. So this gives you a way to tag your prompts by categories, by products. So if I want to see Power Automate Copilot prompts or Power Apps Copilot prompts and curate those for my organization, I can bookmark them. I can copy and paste those into the product. I can store prompts even outside of the Microsoft ecosystem in here. This is a good tool still for that type of use case as well, in addition to the powerful functionality that we now have with these prompts for AI Builder. If you use these prompts, I would love to know what you think. Drop a note in the comments and let me know. And if you have any ideas for other topics you'd like me to talk about on the channel, let me know. I am open for suggestions. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.